and welcome to Bad Movie Brothers. I'm Eric. I'm Chad. And this time we watched Cutting Class. Cut, cut, cut. Cutting Class. Another Brad Pitt flick. Wild. Also has Martin Mull. Also has Roddy McDowell. Attention, faculty, and students. This is so. This was to me a weird movie. I went into this movie cold. I mean, I knew the title of it, uh-huh. and if I'm being honest, I knew Brad Pitt was in it. Okay, how did you know that? Just from the you know YouTube description or whatever. Okay. So it's starting out, and the movie in my head, as this movie is starting out, is a teen romp high school shenanigans movie. Right. And at the start of that movie, that is certainly what it appears to be. There's, you know, a upbeat poppy song. There's a kid on his bike throwing newspapers. And Martin Mull is getting ready to go on a vacation and leave his daughter alone in the house. For a week. Who leaves? their teenage daughter home alone for a week and put a pin in that because as we find out later in the movie he does not go very far Uh, yeah what Uh, what but in any event in any event so yeah i'm like okay i see the shape of this movie there's gonna be a party at her house it's gonna be a whole thing but then as martin mall is getting ready to leave on his fishing trip the movie then tells us about this murderer on the loose and all of a sudden i'm like wait now what's this movie it's like the people who made hocus pocus took a little bit of this movie i think it's like if the people who made friday the 13th were hired to make hocus pocus in high school yep yeah but something like that where then like disney gets the film and they're like all right here we go the fun, silly horror. Oh, oh no! no. Oh, I, we've we've done something terribly wrong. <laughs> this is this was a mistake, and like that's the I saw the guy who directed this movie is a frequent collaborator of John Borman, who made like Excalibur and Deliverance and movies like that, which just seems like the wrong guy yes. to make a hijinksy type movie. Yeah. yeah. So the first bit mm-hmm. of horror type movie we get is Martin mm-hmm. Mull. <laughs> Which out of, he's like out on his hunting right spree. There is a problem. Yeah. He's out on his little horror uh, hunting expedition. Mm-hmm. Trying to get himself a duck, a mallard. Mm-hmm. And he's he's shown up at like the at the hillbilly bar where a guy says to him, Welcome to the kill zone. Welcome to the kill zone, pal. But uh, he's out there hunting. Yeah. And then some punker <laughs> yells out, oh, we haven't said he's also the district attorney. So he's out there hunting. And then we see the the bow and arrow shoots the mm-hmm. DA. Shoots yep. the dad, Martin Ball. So, so that's the first, second idea that we get that this, oh, something's different here. Right. And of course, the, mu- the music, it's real serious and all that. Th- and you're, you know, you are not far into this movie. You're five minutes into this movie. And Martin Mull, comedian Martin Mull, has been shot dead with an arrow. Right. But and I, I don't, at this point, it's, I mean, this whole show is a spoiler. It's not really spoiling anything to say. It turns out later in the movie and like way later in the movie. That Martin Mull is not dead. He he's uh, only not not only is he not dead. Yeah. He he's maybe a mile from his house. Yeah. Yes. Because like then there's a throughout the rest of the movie, and I I I really disliked this. There's a yeah. the, there's a number of scenes of Martin Mull gasping for help or crawling through the brush, and you're thinking, oh, he but he's hours and hours away from town because he left his daughter for a week right right but then like the second scene where you see martin mull is still alive if not the first the high school is there for some sort of not even field trip like just uh, the biology teacher takes him outside to i don't know show him a duck or whatever right right like he literally could have gone hunting you know like at six in the morning before work yeah, come come home and shower and still gone to work every day. 
yeah. he's not on his hunting trip. Yeah. Like there's there's no reason why you wouldn't go home every night right. because he's li- he's like literally in their backyard. Yes. There's also a scene later where they are hunting for the killer. The police are and in 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 woods that are school adjacent. Right. And dogs find Martin Mull in there. He keeps barking. He's sitting in front of Martin Mull, barking at Martin Mull while on during a manhunt, and no one says, we should go see what that dog's barking at. And what is Martin Mull eating that the dog eats? What is that? Oh, that's a good call. Because the 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 joke, because this is a movie that has jokes. Right, yes. Strange, because this movie, strange jokes. This movie definitely thinks it's some sort of dark comedy. It does not work on that level at all. At no. best, at its best moments, it does achieve a sort of amusing campiness, but the intentional humor falls flat every time. Yes. And the joke there is that the reason that nobody comes to Martin Mull's aid is he's ye- when he sees the dog, he's yelling for help, but he has just shoved what I think is a little powdered donut into his mouth. And That's what I think some, so. And for some reason, cannot spit it out. No. Well, you know, you can't whistle when you're eating those things. Sure. It is. They're playing it like he has just shoved a handful of salt, teens into his mouth. Yeah. Such that not only can he not speak, but it is impractical for him to even spit them out. Right. But it is not. It is a donut. Where did he get it from? I, I, I think we're, one of the pouches on his fisherman vest. Ugh. I don't. Maybe the convenience store. Remember, <laughs> he's in town. Right. Right. You got it. You're right. And this, listen, folks, the Martin Mullness of this is just the very tip of this iceberg. Because what this movie is about is the movie is about Martin Mull's daughter, Paula. She goes to high school. She, her boyfriend is Brad Pitt. Dwight. Dwight. Paula and Dwight. Yeah, Paula and Dwight, right? Uh, so Brad yeah. Pitt playing a guy named Dwight for, I'm sure, the only time in his career. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> He's he's her boyfriend, and he's uh he's a random sporto. Yes, the I think coolest they've... kid in class, I'd say, or at least the jockiest. All right, but she's also a little sweet on Brian. Brian's the kind of they didn't have emo yet, so he's a little bit of a new wavy punk kind of kid, a little bit like Rick Mayall and the Young Ones. A lot of sports coats. A lot of yeah, a lot of blazers, a lot of dark, a lot of dark clothes, a lot of brushed up hair. He's got emotions, he's got thoughts, and yes, he is recently out of an asylum. I went to a hospital. I'm better now. See, when I broke my leg, uh, they took an X-ray to see if it was fixed. When it was, they uh, took out the cast and sent me home. But you went to a mental hospital a broken mind now there's no way they can just take a picture and see if that's okay and she oh boy she kind of likes both of them and so the movie is both a who is she going to pick movie and also a one of these two guys is probably the murderer now so brad pitt yeah what is he known for doing in all of his films uh what uh eating right yeah so he eats a lot and drinks a lot in this movie sure i'm wondering if this is the genesis of that whole situation i'd like to go back uh uh-huh. to the other movie mm-hmm. to his first movie and is he eating there i'd like to know i guess it's his actor's secret his actor's secret is that he's hungry it works it works I mean, and like he, he doesn't have the full movie star thing in no, here. You, you can see it's but, coming. Yeah, you can see this kid's got a future. Yeah, for much sure. Much more so than the others. Right. He definitely outshot. I do. I like the actress who plays Paula. Yeah. 
And I did, I liked the guy playing Brian, but Brian is a more, that guy's in a more specific sort of Crispin Glover area. Sure. You know, but Brad Pitt, yeah, you can see, oh, he's, he's, he's got those chops. Right. Or if not, if not acting chops, he's got the, the movie star thing, whatever that is. Yeah, exactly. It's on display. Yeah, sure, sure. You can see it. And and you're right. The the movie's uh, will she or won't she with this guy or that guy? Mm-hmm. And you know, we start seeing different things happening. There starts to be some different interactions with each of them. One of which comes when she becomes a weird swimsuit model for art oh, class. Oh boy! Oh boy! This scene. This scene was very upsetting. This scene was very upsetting and also very emblematic of the movie as a whole. Class is about to start. Shouldn't you be bouncing a ball somewhere? This is very upsetting. (laughs) And folks, I I made a note of this as I was watching it, and I'm going to tell you right now. I will show you a little, like in this show, I, I like to sprinkle in clips from the movie so you can see what we're talking about kind of give the movie its own chance to to fight back a little bit a little defense yeah 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 yeah, yeah. It's, you're not gonna see a lot from this scene because this scene is nothing happens in it nothing happens in it that is r-rated like it is at least visually a pg-13 scene but it is so creepy <laughs> that i cannot bring myself to show you let me tell you something. Once the robe comes off, you aren't seeing dirt. I am not showing you any more of that scene. Because remember, folks, these kids are meant to be high schoolers. And Paula comes walking into the art class in a robe. The art teacher is annoyed that she's late. And it is like, good God, because it's a slasher movie. This is like an R-rated slasher movie. These things are known for their being nudity. Right. I was like, my God, is she going to be a nude model in this high school art class? That's how they set it up. I cannot handle that. I yeah, can't. so th- th- this was just the beginning of the creepy, that, that sort of creepy. Right. And I, quick pin, be, to just to say that, yes, she does, when she takes the robe off, she's at least wearing a swimsuit. But then Brian shows up and he's also going to be a model. And the art teacher is putting them into like really suggestive poses. It is capital U upsetting. Well, even before Brian shows up, Mm -hmm. the very first pose he makes her do is, is the classic, you know, the, it's your secretary comes in and you push your pen off the desk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's got to pick it, it up. It, or to put it different, it's, hey, there's a penny. That's the pose. Right, yeah. That's the pose. And yeah, a teacher guides her into this pose. It is very upsetting. Very upsetting. <laughs> and the language he uses to describe. No, I'm not, <laughs> I, I can't. Look at the muscle groups stretch. Oh, and contract. So... Yeah. So this isn't the end of the creepiness, though. This is only, I'm not sure if it's the very beginning, but it is, it is only the beginning of one of the major themes of this movie, which I am going to call, uh, trying to be as PG as possible, everybody likes Paula. Yeah, flattery will get you everywhere. Stop by my office, would you? Why? It's a surprise. Hey, hey, Paula. They, you do not go. Like, Martin Mull is literally the only male character in this movie to not hit on Paula. Correct. Every teacher hits on Paula. Paula, this is a dangerous place for a pretty girl like That's you. That's right. He's after me. It is. Real and there's and there's no commentary on it. Nope. And she doesn't even seem particularly bothered by it. It is really gross. Yeah, she treats it a lot as you know, boys will be boys. Like, mm, oh well. Right. 
it, like, and you would expect that from Brad Pitt and from Brian. But once the teacher, the principal. Yes. Oh, no. The principal played by Roddy McDowell. Now, folks, I don't know how familiar you are with Mr. Roddy McDowell, but let me just say that Roddy McDowell as any sort of a physical creature does not work. No, this was upsetting. <laughs> Try it all. I'll turn around. So there's two levels of creepy happening. Yeah. In like the adult males. Yeah. There's what we're talking about now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then there's the janitor, Schultz. Oh, man. Who's like a uh, war veteran. And he's creepy in the fact that he still thinks he's at war, but he's the janitor. What is this? Survival class? And, and here's a question. Yeah. In these sorts of films. Sure. Why does every janitor clean the school in the dark? That's an excellent question. Why does that, that is keep an happening? excellent question? Spot the enemy. Take aim. Squeeze the trigger. Retreat. <laughs> That's a good question. I don't have an answer for you on that. But every single time they're like in pitch black cleaning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The way I would describe the janitor from this movie is if you took Stanley Kowalski from UHF. Ah, uh, yep. And you and you made it serious. Right. Exactly. That's that is what you're working with here, and it is, it is one of the many upsetting things. But at least that is so weird that it kind of comes back around. Yes, at the end. Yeah. But, oh, man, because, yeah, and the janitor then becomes, at a certain point, the third possible murderer. Right. You got it. Because my, as we're going, there's mm -hmm. killings happening. There's killings left and right. There's, and they are, they, they range from the sublime to the stupid. Yeah, we get like the art teacher. Yeah, that was great. I liked the art teacher murder. He got thrown into the kiln. Yeah, that was pretty good. I liked that. Yeah. Uh, hocus, I was, hocus pocus right there. Oh, sure. I had my doubts about whether or not that would work, at least in the way portrayed. Sure. But, you know, sure. Then there's, a, then there's an under the bleachers killing, right. which, listen, that's a creepy scene, too. I'm not, that I won't get into no, on a we're PG not show. No, about that. But there's, there's, a, there's some kids under the bleachers. One of them, if not both, I guess both, both. get murdered but their screams are drowned out by the cheering at the end of the basketball game. Correct. Which is, that's fun. That's a fun it conceit. Worked. It worked. Then the third murder <laughs> is a woman gets her head bashed into a Xerox machine as the Xerox makes copies of her face as she dies. But now, it the, doesn't break. It doesn't break. That's not possible. You can't even like press down on that glass without it breaking. <laughs> and that is it. Yes, because he takes her head, womps it against the glass of the photocopier like two or three times, and then she's dead. But he does not put her head through the glass. Now, there was some weird stuff happening with this scene. There's a lot of like weird tongue action on her part as she's yeah. getting killed. Yeah, she's really making her meal at a. Yeah, it was upset. That uh, we're talking about upsetting right. again. That was it. Well, that that was one of those scenes where, like, you f where I felt like someone in the production wanted this to be a comedy, and right. so they really wanted her to like really mug it up and make a lot of fun faces for the photocopies. But again, the tone of this thing is so unrelentingly dour. Right. That the comedy can never, and they're also outside of Martin Mull, there aren't really any comedians in this movie. No. To sell any of it. No. It's but, very strange. But we've now highlighted four killings. Mm -hmm. One the high school doesn't know about because it happened in their wooded area that they haven't explored fully. Sure. The second one is the art teacher in the kiln. They probably would have found that one. You'd think so. Like you can almost grade on a curve 
that uh, he got burned to ashes. Yeah, his fault. Yeah. He, he was in there messing around. <laughs> his fault. Yeah, he's he's cleaning it. Door closed. Couldn't sure, get out. sure, sure. But also, no one mentions it. Like, there's not like oh. a scene where they're like, "Did you hear about the art teacher?" Right. But the kids yeah. under the bleachers are at least missing. They are missing, and the janitor at one point picks up his mop, which is covered in I don't know brains, and he's like, well, "What's that?" And that is <laughs> that is the end of that. Well, now there was a broken like slushy cup there. Okay. So maybe he was thinking, oh, some slushy. Maybe I'll get a little free drink from the mop. Look, are we, who are we talk about? Ooh. But then we, everyone knows that the assistant principal lady gets killed because Brad Pitt finds her. Right now, pause. Paused at this point in the movie. Where? Who do you, Chad, think is the killer? Okay, this is going to throw you. Okay. The math teacher. <laughs> he was a jerk. He is a jerk. He That's is a jerk. I, I, at this point, I thought, at this point, I thought it was Brad Pitt. No, I knew it wasn't Brad Pitt. You see, but the movie's really trying to sell early on the, the Brad Pitt's the murderer. Yeah, well, I'm, yeah. I'm but this is it. also this is also one of those movies where it doesn't feel particularly artful in that regard. Right. It's just right. like there are four possibilities here. It is either Brad Pitt, Brian. It's either the, it's either the the boyfriend who for who you know for sure isn't the killer. Wink, wink. Right. Brian, who has a history of murder. Maybe. The ja the janitor, who's you know the janitor. Or some complete unknown, unguessable entity. And and it's 25% any way you turn. Well, yeah, because they were kind of setting up the gym teacher, the math mm -hmm. teacher, and the principal as mm -hmm. possible outlets. Yeah. Let's talk about the gym teacher for a second. I don't want to. What sort of weird self-instruction gym class is he run? Because this is, this is a high school gym class where... Every gym activity is happening simultaneously. You got it. And the gym teacher is sort of just freewheel debasing whoever he feels like. Concentrate, Woods. Concentrate. So we don't know who the killer is, but people right. are, we, now we know for sure people in the high school are getting killed. Right. And also at this point, it starts to really become clear that the movie is really suffering from the lack of a central character because it's spending so much time, so much shoe leather on Brian and Brad Pitt and being mysterious about the two of them that we don't ever really get to know Paula, who is the ostensible main character of the movie. Right. And I think the movie would be a lot stronger if we got to have Paula as a more traditional POV character. Well, but I think... That. Hold on. I think the movie is really thrown off its axis, both by the who's the killer plot and by Brad Pitt. I yeah. feel like they got Brad Pitt in there and they started just shoving more stuff at him and Paula started losing because of that. Yeah, they definitely saw they had something there. And it's like, oh, let's mm. get more him, more him, mm. more him. But uh, if uh, an assistant principal were to be kill it inside the school mm -hmm. in such a way sure you think they'd be having classes the next day do you think they would let people leave the school <laughs> uh. because like pretty much what happens is brad pitt finds her just immediately goes brian did this Yep. Because I think he had, to be fair, seen Brian like washing blood off his hands in the bathroom or something like that. You did it. He's the killer. And then we get another murder in the school. The Which is the next murder? The gym teacher. Okay. Which is very fakey. Yeah, because he's stabbed with the American flag through the oh. trampoline. Yeah. Right, is, because, 
because Not the gym possible. teacher the gym teacher is just ha- like having some extracurricular trampoline time like i guess he's on lunch break or whatever and he decides he's going to get in some tramp action well now i'll have you know yeah as a former trampoliner myself <laughs> true when when you have one it's addictive you know uh i also had access to that trampoline yeah i was fine well you but in any out. event in any event he's tramping it up and we see a guy come running in with the American flag to kind of whoop. Yeah, not possible. The, the clearance no. doesn't exist. Right. And also, then when they show the shot of the gym teacher impaled on the flagpole, which I will not share here, it, it could not look fake here. I mean, right. it's very much just a, they held the pole next. I don't even think they had the pole next to him. It's like at the end of the trampoline. Yes. Yeah. Right? No, they didn't stick the it tram- to the trampoline. The flag is here. The guy is here. And the camera is like here. It's right. it's pretty rough. It is pretty right. rough. Right. So now we've had all these murders. So many murders. And we we uh, the we, cut scenes in the, in this movie to night day night day are very confusing. Oh, I I never know what day it is, what time of day it is. This movie takes place over the course of approximately three years. Well, no, it's only a week. <laughs> we know that because he's. I understand. I was I was using a device called hyperbole. Yeah, and I was shutting it down. But now we get to the point where Paul is at home studying, mm-hmm. and our uh, creepy young man Brian, who's been mm-hmm. uh, pointed, the finger has been pointed at him for these murders. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But they can't. But you know what him. happens when Brad Pitt points a finger at Brian? What happens? He has three fingers. Pointing back at himself. Well, I thought he was going to be eating something. Anyway. So, it, creepy guy comes to Paula's yeah. house. Yeah. In a weird bathtub scene. I don't know what she was doing. Oh, man. I forgot about the bathtub. Yeah, he, like, breaks into her house and then, like... <laughs> but what is confront, she doing? Confronts her as she's about to take an underwear bath. Yeah, I don't understand what she's doing. Oh no, man! There's poor Paul. For, Paula gets real short shrift in this movie. I don't. I'm afraid I did not look up the actress's name. I did at one point, but I didn't write it down. And it seems like she was in a couple of horror movies. She's a charming young woman. She has an unusually husky voice, which really sets her apart from uh, you know from other actresses of her age in these sorts of movies. That ring belongs to the killer. I know. That ring belongs to Dwight. We gotta stop him. We must help him. She's perfectly charming. She gets, uh, her character could, I guess every character is pretty inconsistent in this movie. Yep. She is all over the place. Yep. I don't understand why she likes Brad Pitt or her friends because they're all terrible to her. Right. throughout the movie brian is admittedly pretty nice to her he does get her a hot dog yeah and, and in this scene he convinces her that mm-hmm. he didn't do any of this and that he wants to find the killer with her how does he convince her uh he I gives don't know. her he gives her a pair of scissors and asks her to kill him go on take him go on Stab me. Stab me if you think I'm the killer. We are back at the school where Brian and Paula are going to try and Scooby-Doo out the murderer. And uh, so they're looking around. They get split up. And By the janitor and his mom. And now, now we've got Brad Pitt sort of chasing Paula around, trying to catch back up with her. And she's mm-hmm. starting to think, oh, no. Dwight mm-hmm. must be the killer. Right. Mm-hmm. And this is where the math teacher comes back into the fi- picture. Right, because he's there. The math teacher provides shelter for Paula. In, in the math room. In the math room. They close yeah. the door. It yeah. turns out the killer has put a word <laughs> problem on the board about trains and whatnot. It, it, in what may well be my favorite scene of the movie, it is at this point that the insanity of this movie comes to a head. Yes. 
Yes. So the math teacher is trying to solve the word problem. Yeah, which he can't do because even though it's a very, it is, I can't tell if it's a very, because the choices, the possible answers are either one or two. Right. And whichever, and then the doors are numbered one and two. And if you go through the wrong door, you're going to be murdered. Right. So this strikes me as it must be a very simple math problem. But at the same time, I didn't rewind it or anything. I didn't feel like we had been given enough information to solve this problem. No, no. Like, it seemed like your ability to solve this problem depended on your knowledge of how many miles away Chicago was or something like that. Correct. Yeah. But he does solve it. Yes. But the killer wanted him to solve it and is waiting with an ax in hand. Mm -hmm. And this is when we find out who the killer was. Is, was, will be. And who, sir, is the killer? Young Brian. (sighs) Wrong door. And like, and Brian has flipped the crazy switch while he's he's been apart, while he's been away from Paula. Yeah, he's full on. And it's super weird because like he had been, you know, he'd been working the Paula game pretty hard up until now and certainly trying to convince her that he was innocent. And like uh, uh, acknowledging now that Brian is the killer, he still probably could have gotten away with framing Brad Pitt for the murders as I don't know, a sort of revenge or whatever, and making Paula his girlfriend. But he very quickly drops all pretense and is like, hi, Paula, I'm the killer, and I am now super crazy. He threw it all away. He shoots! He scores! Yeah! I'm better than Dwight. Now, a couple of notes about the math teacher scene. I love Paula yelling at the math teacher. You were the math teacher. Just do it. The math teacher does solve the problem incorrectly. Does he? Yes. He says it is one, and then he goes through the door. He gets axed, and then Brian says he forgot to account for the difference in time zones. He didn't account for the difference in time zones. So he knew he would get it wrong? No, well, by the way that Brian has set it up, the way it works is he was standing outside the door with the wrong answer. And if he came out the wrong answer door, which he did, he was going to get axed. Presumably, had he gone out the door with the correct answer, he would have lived, I guess? Or at least it would have taken... That is what the question presupposes, is that if you get it right, you will go through the door and live. Well, whatever. So what did you think? Were you surprised? by this change well uh, before i state that answer let me just say that the answer to this math problem was to not go through a door right (laughs) why like go out the window of the math classroom and leave the school whatever you do like because even if you think for sure you have it right do not trust that the killer (laughs) is gonna be okay with that Right. That said, what do I think of the revelation? Well, like I say, while I had thought that the killer was going to turn out to be Brad Pitt, I believed the entire time there was an equal chance that it was Brian. Mm-hmm. So that it was one of the two prime suspects was not particularly surprising. I for sure thought they were going to go with one of the other options. Neither sure. one of them. I get that. But here's, but here's where, this is where my brain went when we saw it was Brian, because at that point, the movie becomes a very, uh, well, structurally traditional Escape the Killer movie. Right. Where it's, where it's Brad Pitt and Paula trying to escape from Brian. I kept thinking that it was going to turn out that Brian was also the killer and that they were killers together. With who? Brian and Brad Pitt. That they were best friend killers. And like, so then in the math scene, I thought, I kind of thought the deal would be Brian was waiting outside of one door, Brad Pitt was waiting outside of the other. And whichever door you left, one of them was going to kill you. And then there would be some sort of twist a little bit into the movie where Paula thinks that they've escaped Brian and Brad Pitt's like, but you didn't think about me. Right. Right. But so, you know, essentially scream. But that is not 
where they went at this point. Although I do wonder if in a world where it's not Brad Pitt in the movie, if that was the intention. Could be. But yes, at this point, it is now a runaway from Brian who is dragging his axe across the lockers. Right. So you don't get killed. And they end up in the school's auto shop because this is another 80s high school movie where the school has an auto shop. I believe there's a few high schools in South Bend that have an auto shop. I'll tell you what. Would have been helpful. Yeah. Because I know nothing about right. fixing a car. Right. And had they and had they made me learn how to like change my own oil from like Mr. Brooks or something, then I you know, then I'd be somewhere. No. Well, we didn't have that. No. But in any event. So they have a they, power tool fight. They have a grinder the, fight. Yeah. In the shop. Mm-hmm. Which is which is pretty great. Yeah, and then uh, during the fight, Mm. the janitor shows up again. He doesn't do anything, but just says, is this survival class? And watches the the proceedings. Which I was there for. Also, these are corded power tools. Yes. So A, they have extraordinarily long cords. B, there's a whole thing where Brad Pitt tells Paula to unplug (laughs) Brian's grinder. Right. And she cannot because it's in this power strip, which seemed realistic. But I was a little bit like, Paula. The whole thing. Turn off the power strip. Yeah, the whole thing. I mean, I guess that's going to leave Brad Pitt weaponless too, but I think that's a net positive. Right. But eventually she uh, she's left with a decision of either Brad Pitt lives or I guess you die. Well, Brad Pitt, <laughs> Brian manages to get Brad Pitt's head in a vice, yeah. literally, yeah. literally, in, in, a, in a sequence of events that suggests to me that they don't really know how a vice works. Mm-hmm. And th- because we're led to believe that Brian has it at the point where one more turn is going to kill Brad Pitt, which I feel true. like would have done more damage than it had done yes. if we were at that point. Right. And so Paula decides that her only move now is to seduce Brian to get him to leave Brad Pitt alone and then hammer in the head. Full full inside the head. Yeah, the claw part. Wonk. Right. Yeah, and then she gets uh, Brad Pitt out of the vice. I think the janitor says something else insane. Mm-hmm. And then they, they drive away off into the sunset for happiness. Here comes Martin Mull. <laughs> He's, he has made it down the hill into town. How a hill is entered into it, I don't know. What's that? It's not getting out of the way. It's my father! He's made it back into town. He is in the street. They're driving down the road. They're having an insane conversation about how Brian had said, because he has this whole, mo- Brian has this whole monologue about how he wants to be the greatest killer ever and master murdering in the future. Right. Which apparently space means, time. right, beyond that he can time. murder beyond space and time. So what that means is that even though he is dead, he has, once again, cut the brakes on Brad Pitt's car. I guess somehow knowing that Martin Mull would be there, or I guess maybe just that maybe Brad Pitt would die. I don't right. know. Right, right. But so now they're barreling toward Martin Mull, and Brad Pitt says one of the most insane lines in an insane movie, which is, he won't get out of the way, as if that means that they have no choice but to hit Martin Mull. Brad, the steering still works, Brad. Right. Well, he does He does some maneuvering. He ends up doing way over maneuvering and like spinning the car to just barely save Martin Mull's life. But to Brad Pitt, I say to you, just drive around him, man. And then I don't know, try to curb that thing or something. And to Martin Mull, I say, Martin, move. Yeah. Don't be in the street, bro. Yeah. Move. But, but, okay. So he does the, does the maneuver. They miss him. They all catch Mm -hmm. up at the car. Yeah. And then and then Martin Mull's like, fine. Yeah. It's it really is like he has not been shot by an arrow 
and like a dealing with ago. exposure <laughs> for most of a week. Right. Yeah. Oh, it's wild. It and is then, wild. And then that's it. You know. Yeah, and that's the movie. Cutting class. Right, because he was concerned that she'd be cutting class. No cutting class. Chad, what did you think of this movie? Oh, so, so I think we've mentioned a lot of the flaws with it. Yeah. I didn't know. it. Like we were saying, it wanted to be two different things at once. Yeah. And it wasn't working on either side of it. No. Uh, I enjoyed seeing what clearly was at least cl- close to the beginning of Brad Pitt's career. Fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you know, I, there wasn't a lot here for me. I, I would say that I sort of liked it. Uh, there was, there's a long stretch in the middle where I was pretty bored by it. Mm-hmm. But I, I quite liked the first half hour. I quite liked the last half hour. Um, it is not, you're right, it doesn't work. It, it, it is in its failure to work that I appreciated it. If I can get really pretentious for half a second, the, I, was, I was taught that the definition of camp is failed seriousness, and this movie is for sure that. And so from that point of view, I, I think that it fails at being serious so much that it is kind of campy funny. And in that regard, I think it's kind of a good, bad movie. But, so do, uh, yeah. So mm-hmm. here's with that. Yeah. Like, like if you're, uh, there's absolutely nothing else you're going to be watching. You got nothing else on your schedule to check. Oh no, check for out. sure. For sure. But Throw this by, Oh, that's what you're saying. Yeah. I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. I like you could do a lot worse if you're having if you're having a friends over watch a dumb horror movie night. You could do a lot worse. Yeah, sure. Than cutting class, especially because of the Brad Pitt of it all. Let we need to rate this movie. We need I, to rank. I see. It. I, I, it's worse than top half. So bottom half, but like top of the bottom half to me. Okay, hold on. So what does that mean? That means we're somewhere around like number like six so you're in like reckless kelly territory okay so here's how so you got reckless kelly Uh so let's go but so i'm gonna go one below reckless kelly mystery monsters reckless kelly fright night part two the other roddy mcdowell movie i'm going up i'm going up up. like up towards one or up towards up towards one get crazy speed zone See, I, to me, it's worse than Reckless Kelly. You think, okay, is it worse than Mystery Monsters? Under yeah. Mystery Monsters is Dreamer. Oh, God. I'd put it right there. You would put it between Mystery Monsters and Dreamer. Yeah, because there was I... some funny stuff in Mystery Monsters that I did like. Sure, and I, and I would say there's some funny stuff in this. I mean, it is... It, it is a creepy movie, but it's also so over-the-top creepy that that's where I kind of get that good-bad right. movie thing. Like, to me, to me, I would probably rather watch this movie than Witchboard 2. Okay. Just because Witchboard 2 is sort of an overall blandness. Yeah. And Witchboard 2 is up a little bit okay. from where you're at. So here's, here's kind of the deal. We got – let me give you this sequence of movies. Because I think we're gonna have to compromise somewhere in the middle. Which board two is number like fifteen? Then Speed Zone is sixteen. Get Crazy at seventeen. Fright Night Part Two. Reckless Kelly. Mystery Monsters. I guess I would propose putting it maybe in between Fright Night and Reckless Kelly. That or the next one up. Between Get Crazy and Fright Night? Yeah. I would do that because I think I liked this better than Fright Night. All right. Cutting class. On the list. How many are there? On the list? I haven't retyped it. So hold on. There's 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. I think there's 37. Holy cow. I know. So this is our 37th episode. 
Almost well, actually, it's our 39th years. because we did that two-part ranking special. Oh, man. This is our 39th episode. Tremendous. Of Bad Movie Brothers. You're We're... all welcome. <laughs> How many of you have watched all 38 episodes? According to our YouTube views, not very many. Well, I, hey, we've had a director watch it, so I don't care. That's true. That is true. We have. Well, I can only hope that the director of Cutting Class, watch, or better yet, Brad. 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 Tune in, Brad. Please. Brad, I loved you in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. You are welcome on Bad Movie Brothers. Wait, wait a second. Wait a second. Yeah. Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait. A second. Yeah. Is that the only Brad movie that you like? It's just the most recent. Well, come on. That was like his last, and it's a great performance. Hey, Brad. I got some snacks. I know you like snacks. Here's the offer I am prepared to make, Brad. Oh. Come on the show. You can you can pick the movie from a pre-approved list. You can pick the movie, and for that episode, we will not be the bad movie brothers. We will be the Brad movie brothers. And we'll we'll cater it. You like <laughs> That's right. That's right. So, Brad, have your people. Call my people. Let's make this happen. I'm into it. Bye. Goodbye. He's not going to come.